In this video, going to look at how to get started with a couple of modules to create Python command line applications, namely Typer and Rich. Uh, Typer is the package that will actually create the command line application. It's written by the maintainer of FastAPI, so you might guess it's going to make uh, use of a lot of type hints. And then we're going to use Rich at the end of the video for store, uh, not storing data, but formatting data formatting the output. Then in the next video, we'll add SQL model to the mix and begin creating a countdown application. But for right now, let's go ahead and get started with Typer. Now, Typer is distributed as a Python package, so you can install it with pip. And while this is installing here, I'll go ahead and add that I'm using a code space here, GitHub code space, and which means you could also use Visual Studio Code on the desktop. And also notice that I did not create a virtual environment because I'm in a code space. I could, but I don't need to. I've also already installed the Python extension and the rough linting extension, and I've got both of those set up. You can look at other videos I've done to see uh, that kind of configuration I like to use. Hyper installed, I can now go ahead and create a new file. I'll call it main.py and we can get started. Now, what I'm going to want to do, this is the way Typer works, is that you have your Typer command line application and then you have commands that you invoke. And then, based on which command is invoked, Typer will call a function that will write. And so let's go ahead and write a function, call it say hello, and it's going to print hey there. Now, I want to be able to have a command line application that when I invoke a certain function, or when I invoke a certain command, it's going to call this function. So, I'll need to have a typer application. So, I will import the typer module, and I will create an instance of the typer app. Now, to associate this function with a command, all I have to do is decorated with the command decorator. What will happen is there will now be a command for this application that has the same name as the function that it decorates. The only difference is that the underscore in the function name will be replaced by a dash in the command name. So this will so there will be a command named say dash hello that when it is invoked will call this function say underscore hello see here let's get one more real quick so let's say app command and we'll do a def say goodbye and we'll print so long and we'll spell everything correctly all right so now what i need is when this script is invoked i want typer to set all of this up so I need to call, or I need to invoke this instance of the app. So I will create my entry point. And I'll call it. And that's literally how simple this is. So let's see what this will do. So let's try to invoke this at the command line. It's going to tell me there's an error, that I'm missing a command. Again, remember, I'm going to have a command for each of these functions. So what, could, what, are, those, so what are those commands going to be? Well, if I use the double dash help option, which is built in to Typer, and seeing all this formatting and everything, we're getting this, it's, uh, it's all built into Typer. And there's some options. We'll create an option here in a minute. But also here are these two commands down here. Say hello, which corresponds to this function, and say goodbye, which corresponds to the say goodbye function. So now if I were to say main.py, say hello, hey there, and python main.py, say goodbye, so long. It's literally that simple. But there's more that we can do. Let's greet a specific person. So up here say hello, name with the type hint of string, and then 
in the function itself. We'll say hey there to name. And what we can do is call say hello again. See what happens. This time it gives me an error. Whereas before it said hey there, this time it gives me an error. It said it's missing an argument name. Well, we can also get help, run the help option, on a command. And here what we'll see is we'll see some information about the argument. So what it did is it took this parameter here and it turned it into an argument. And that argument, again, has the same name as the parameter by default, and these can be, this can be configured. It is text, it does not have a default, and it is required. So, if I were to do something like this, say hello typer, it'll say hey there to typer. Let's take a look at one more thing here, and that would be options. Now, an option is obviously going to be optional. So let's say that we want to express how enthusiastic we are about saying hello. So maybe I'll add enthusiasm. And this is an integer. I'm going to set it to 1 by default. And the way that this is going to work is that whatever the value of enthusiasm is, enthusiasm, rather, is going to be how many exclamation points we put after the greeting. Now, let's take a look at the help again. And now you're going to see that we still have the name argument, but we now have the enthusiasm option. Notice that the enthusiasm option, just like the help option, is prefixed by two dashes. It's an integer, and its default is one. Thus, it's optional. I can leave it off, and there will still be only one exclamation point. Now, if I remove this, and run the help, it's going to interpret it as an argument. All right, so but that's this is the, this is the way that we want it. Okay. So um, now if I were to say uh, python main.py say hello double dash enthusiasm and I put 10, whoops, I have to include my name argument, it's going, to, it's going to put 10 exclamation points, thus being very enthusiastic. Now, there is a, now there's one more problem with this. And let's say I put in a negative number. Now, this is not going to crash. Probably should, but it's not going to. And, but the least thing, at least what I want to do is show some kind of message to the user saying, hey, enthusiasm should be a positive number. Go up here and say if enthusiasm is less than one, print enthusiasm should be uh, positive, else proceed as normal. And now I'll see that message, but is there really any indication here to the user that anything went wrong? Like generally you'd want to have this be bold red text, perhaps. We can do that with another Python package called rich. So I'll install that at the command line as well with pip. And that was actually, I think actually that was installed with typer. But at any rate, rich has a special object for printing formatted text. It's a console. So I'll say from rich.console import console. And then I'll create an instance of said console. And then instead of calling the built-in print function for Python, I'll use the print method of the console object. And then I can use uh, special formatting tags that which includes. So I could prefix this and I could say bold red. And on the other end, to close it off, bold red. Now what happens? Whoops, I tried to install rich again. We get bold red text. Now this works, but you're kind of breaking the dry principle. 
because maybe we want to format errors other places in the code. We don't want to hard code this in there. So what I can do instead is there's a style object that I can import. So from rich.style import style. And then I can create an instance of a style object that, that for bold red text and reuse it anywhere. And even better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data class that'll kind of keep a that kind of keep a catalog, I guess you could say, of the different of the different styles. So let's create the data class and let's create a new class that's going to decorate called application styles. And the first one is going to be error. And it will be a style. And then this, and then the keyword arguments to style, as you can see, are the different formatting options. So for example, we'll say color is going to be red, and then bold is going to be true. So this does the same thing. It's just reusable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create app styles. Oops, styles is going to be an instance of application styles. And then I'll take out the markup from this print statement or print function call or print method call in this case. And then I'll add the style keyword argument and I'll set it to app styles dot error. Now when I run this, it's not going to do anything different, but suppose I wanted to change the formatting for styles later on. I can do it in one place. And it doesn't clutter up the, and it doesn't clutter up um, all over the place. As we continue to write this application, we'll add more styles to this class. But for now, that's enough to get started with uh, Typer and Rich.